Hello everyone, and welcome to my third video. Today, we will be using the NS Timer class to create a timer application. We will also use a label to display the amount of seconds, and the label will change with a certain time interval that we will set up in a reference to the NS Timer class. Let's get started. Alright, so let's open up the Xcode application, and we will click on Create a New Xcode Project. This will be a single view application. Click Next. The product name, you can call it something like, let's do iTimer. You can call it whatever you want. The language will be set to Swift. Devices can be universal, or you can choose iPhone or iPad. And do not check Qscore data. Create it to anywhere you want. And I'll just replace this. Alright, so now we're ready to go. Okay, so let's hop right into our main.storyboard. And now we can design the UI of our application. So let's see what we need. First, we're going to need a label to display the time. Let's drag this over here. And we're going to need two buttons. We can do a start button and a stop button. Okay. And now I'm going to put some configurations to the label make it bigger, center it, so you can just follow along with me. Choose any font you want. I'm probably going to go for, I'll stick with this, but let's do 100. Change that to 10. Yeah, we need a little bit bigger. Let's go with 200. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And uh, let me change the size of our scene. So I'm going for an iPhone 6, so let's go for the iPhone 4.7 inch. Orientation is inferred. Let's actually just do portrait. Drag this. And now we can add our buttons. I'm going to put one here. Just call this start. Oh, it looks like our other button disappeared. Oh, there it is. Okay. Just can I drag that over? No, I'll, I'll just delete it then. And put a new one. Delete that. Okay. Command D. Get another one. Line it up. Right here. And call this one stop. Alright, so our UI is set up. Let's go ahead and build and run our application to make sure everything is working fine. And I apologize for the background sound. That's my computer heating up. I guess Xcode takes a lot of memory. <laughs> okay, so our our label is populating and our buttons are populating the field. And our start and stop button are able to be pushed. But we need to add functionality to these elements. So as you know, we can hop into the assistant editor and connect our elements to our code. So I will connect the label. And if you want to know what I'm doing, you can go ahead and check out my previous video on basics of UIKit. That I feel like that'll help you. Okay, so we can call this, let's call this timer label. Connect it. And we will connect our two buttons. So, start, ETN. Let's call it start action. Make sure you set it to action and connect and then stop stop action action touch up inside connect and we're also going to connect these two buttons to our outlets as well I'll explain this in a little bit call the start BTN and this will be an outlet action because we're in the outlet section and we'll do the same thing with the stop BTN outlet. Okay, so later on in our app, as we get onto it, we will have to hide these buttons from our view. And you can't do that with an action, so you have to create an outlet and then call these outlets in our uh, functions, like view did load or in our start action. That's when we call it. So that's why I set these up as outlets. You'll see in a little bit. So let's go back to the idea of our app. When the user clicks on the start button, the label should update meaning it will go from 10 to 9 to 8, and so on and so forth. 
But how can we do this? Since the value of this label is a string, and we have to convert it to integer, we can do this with a simple line of code. First, we're going to have to create a variable that will store the text of the label. We can call this time left. And we'll, call, we'll <clears throat> assign this to the value of 10. And in our view to load, we can call timer label dot text. It's going to be equal to time left. But there's going to be an error thrown at us. How can this be possible? How can we set a value of integer to a value that needs a string? We can do this with an easy little string and like that. So now we can create our timer using the reference to the NS timer class. So we will go down to our start action function and type NS timer dot schedule timer with time interval and you're going to pick the second one, not the one that says invocation, but the one that says target. And now we have a list of parameters that we have to fill out. The first one being the time interval, which will be one second, because it's a standard timer. And our target will be self, and I'll explain that in a little bit. So self references the view controller, which references our view. So that means our timer will be put will be accessed by our view and our label can update. And our selectors is going to be the name of a function that we can create below our stop action, which will access the timer. So we can call it update timer and our user info will be nil we will not uh, be bothered by this yet and our repeats will be true so that means it will update every second not just one time so now we have our timer set up but now we have to create our update timer function that will access this timer so right below our stop action we will write func actually no we're not in there yet right after yeah uh, we'll write func update timer and open close curly braces and in here we will call our variable which was called time left in double minus sign which will which uh, with each second of the timer it will uh, go down by one so it'll go by the value initially 10 to 9 so on and so forth but now if you build and run this our timer should work Oh, that's right. So uh, in here, our view to load, we have to put this in our update timer function. So there. Now we can build and run. Now if you click on start, look at that. So now it's going down. So that's perfect. Uh, first of all, let's center our label and then check it out. Center. Now we can build and run. Alright. Now, if you want. Good, yeah, now it's centered. Now, let's think of some things that's going to be a problem in this app. So, let's wait for it to get down to zero. Okay, you can see it goes into the negatives. So, most timers that I've seen do not go into negatives because it's pretty useless. But now we can change that. And also, our stop button doesn't work. So, we will add all these functionalities now. So, let's first address the problem of the timer going into the negatives. And we can do this by, in our view to load, we can write a simple if statement. So we can say if time left is equal equal to zero, then we can say timer, oh, okay, so we have to call our timer first, right? So our timer is not universal. So we'll have to paste this in our start action. So we'll say, or could we do this in our uh, update timer? Let's try that out. See, we're all learning here. Okay, so time left is equal to zero. Then we can say... Actually, I have to set this equal to something. Wow, he did a ton of stuff wrong there. So let's say var timer is equal to ns timer let... Okay. So now we can say if time left is equal equal to zero, then we can say timer dot... Oh yeah, we have to put this up the top of our class. Let timer equal to cut that and this timer. And then in our viewed load, actually no, in our start action, 
timer is equal to and this timer uh let's see oh it has to be var okay there we go wow we just cleared all that up now sorry about that so okay let's go back to here now if time left is equal equal to zero then we can say timer dot invalidate invalidate this is just a fancy word for stop so let's go ahead and run this and see what happens Okay, so if we hit start, 9, 8, let's wait for it to count down. Look at that, it stopped. That's awesome. Okay, so now we got that fixed. So now we can work on getting our stop button to work. So in our stop action function, I'm going to make some space, and all we're going to need to type is one line of code, and it is timer.invalidate. Again, invalidate means to stop. So now if you build and run this, we can test the new stop button. So if we start it, 9, 8, let's stop it. Check that out, it stops. But if we resume start, it goes to 7, 6. Now we can stop it one more time at 3. And now we can let it run. There we go, that's our timer. But let me show you one thing. I'm going to go ahead and build and run this again. If you hit start, hit start again, it's going to call the timer twice. So now look how fast it's going. It's going incredibly fast, and it didn't even stop at zero. So we can, uh, we can prevent this. You remember when we created our outlets for start button and stop button, and I said we were going to hide them from our view? We can do that now. So we can say, as soon as we hit the start button, which is in our start action function, we can call start button dot hidden, meaning it's going to hide from the view, is going to equal true. And then when we hit the stop action, timer, or not timer, uh, start button dot hidden, it's going to equal false. And then when our view loads, we can say stop button dot hidden is equal to true because the timer hasn't started yet, so there's no use for the stop button. And then in our start action, we can say stop button dot hidden is equal to false. So let's run this. Okay, so look, our stop button is hidden. As soon as we hit the start button, the stop button appears and it starts. If we hit stop, the start button appears. Check that out. Isn't that cool? Thanks for watching this tutorial and I hope you enjoyed. But I have a little small challenge for you. Can you figure out how to implement a reset button? So you can just drag it in the middle and click on and hit reset. And see if you can find uh, the correct way to add functionality to this reset button. See you in the next video.